could you give some practical examples mm -hmm. of what do I feel my partner's love for me would motivate them to do for me? Yes. So if I'm looking at this question from my personal perspective, I'm looking at it from my personal flawed perspective of love, probably. Mm -hmm. And I need to look at my flaws with regard to what I expect. Mm -hmm. So there's two ways we can approach these particular questions mm -hmm. in terms of examples. One way is to see what I might expect from my partner that is out of harmony with God's love. Yeah. And th the other is to look at things that I expect from my partner that I believe are in harmony with God's love. Yeah. Right? Not that God's love expects anything. No. But what I'm saying is what would, love, what would her love of me from God's perspective motivate her to do? For example, if we think about... Um the issue of truth. So if I know from God's perspective, being truthful is loving. Yes. But I think, well, my partner's love of me would cause him to tell me I look beautiful every day of the week. Even when I don't. No matter what. <laughs> <laughs> um, then I could see, hang on, maybe my expectation is not loving. Exactly. And it's not actually what love would motivate my partner to do. Exactly. Actually, love would motivate my partner to be honest with me about Everything, everything they feel. Yes. If they didn't want to watch the, you know, Desperate Housewives or the Hallmark <laughs> movie or whatever, yeah. I wouldn't expect them to say, yes, dear, I will, yes. and see that as evidence of their love. Yes, yeah. correct. I also wouldn't expect them to um, withhold from doing things that love would normally request of them to do. So in other words... Um, I, would, I would also be aware, and this is a very important part mm -hmm. of, this, of these examples. What I see a lot of people doing in their relationships is they hope for the best about the love that their partner has for them. And they don't look at how their, love dis how their partner's love for them is displayed by their partner towards them. Yeah. And so, so if we personalise these examples... Mm -hmm. I need to examine how not only do you show your love for me, but also whether my expectations of how you show your love for me are actually in harmony with what God would say is loving. So if I can give two examples, an uh, example of each of these particular things. Mm -hmm. If I expected you to do something for me that I know God's love wouldn't do, then I know that I'm the person who's out of harmony with love through my expectation. Yes. But if I desired that you do something for me that I know God's love would do and you don't do it, then I know you're the person out of harmony with love from God's perspective. Yeah. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. Do you, could you give some uh, specific examples? Or yeah, let's, like... let's look, look at sort of real examples of that. Yeah. Let's say I desire that you don't tell me the truth when I lie to my friends about things, like I might exaggerate. And, and every time you go, you exaggerate it, I go, I don't want to know. You leave me alone. <laughs> All right? That's me wanting you to do something that is going to actually finish up being... Um, a betrayal of yourself. Yeah. And also, I want you to betray me in a way. I, I, I'm wanting it because I want to avoid how I feel when somebody tells me that I'm exaggerating. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing there is I'm requesting of you something that is not loving. Mm. I'm thinking it's love, but it's not. Yeah. You're supporting a lie. Mm -hmm. And if you were in harmony with God, you wouldn't want to support the lie. So, so that's an example on one side. On the other side, let's say you wanted me to exaggerate mm. because you get then to feel certain powerful feelings or certain emotions that I'm also getting to feel. In other words, you have an addiction towards exaggeration as much as I do. Mm -hmm. That is also not loving. Yeah. Right? That is also out of harmony. That's, that's you expecting me or wanting me to do something out of harmony of love because it supports your position of love. And a person who loved from God's perspective would not do that. Mm -hmm. right? 
Even though she knew she wanted it, she wouldn't do it. Yeah. Yeah. And if I knew that, I would not allow that to occur. I'd go, actually, I feel you supported that or you wanted me to exaggerate. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I would mm -hmm. discuss that. Mm -hmm. So that's just a little example. We, yeah. we can come up with much larger examples, of course, where bigger issues come up. Yeah. Is, we see these issues often coming up with friends, mm -hmm. you know, where you know that a friend of yours has cheated on a husband mm -hmm. and you come along and tell me. Now, my love for myself would dictate that I have to tell him now. Mm -hmm. My love for him would dictate that I have to tell him. But you might not want me to. And I feel that your love for me <coughs> would motivate you to shut up about it. Exactly. Yeah. Now there is a problem. Yep. There is a compromise that I'm being asked to make. I'm asked, being asked to betray myself. Mm -hmm. I'm being asked to betray God's laws in order to make you feel okay. But you told me in the first place. Mm -hmm. So you obviously had a reason for telling me. What, yep. Whatever that reason was needs to be addressed as well. Um, and honestly... If in a good relationship, you'd sell each other everything anyway. Yeah. But then if you expect me not to act upon the information I'm given and you don't want to act upon the information given, then the question is, do you love me? I don't think you do. Mm -hmm. And if you're expecting me to not act in harmony with love and truth on this issue, then you don't love me. And that's from God's perspective, mm. <laughs> not from my own. Yeah. So this is an example of what happens frequently is that one or the other asks the partner to lie for them or to lie to protect their emotions. Mm -hmm. And to do such a thing obviously would be out of harmony with love, even though the partner thinks it's in harmony with love. Yes. <laughs> and we mentioned in one of the earlier sets of examples this idea of alleviating fear. Exactly. Most of us feel that if you love me, you will alleviate my fear. You will make my fear go away. Be it of... Uh, my friends, my family. My friends, my family. Physical fears. Snakes. Sexual fears. Whatever. Mm. Yeah. Uh, you'll be the... If, if, a, if another man's threatening me, you'll be the tough guy who comes in and makes me feel safe again. A lot Even to the point like of that's... beating up the other guy, yes. which yeah. is out of harmony with love. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if I'm analysing that, I could go, wow, I actually always want AJ to come in and protect me when I feel afraid mm. in instances with men. But I know from God's perspective that actually that fears within me and nothing he does is actually going to alleviate in the long term. No. So my and in fact, the only thing that's going to correct it with the men is for you to get rid of that fear because mm -hmm. then you'll stop attracting these men. Yes. yes. So my feeling that it's love that would motivate you to do that, I can then go, oh, hang on, my concept of love is flawed here. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And so this requires quite a lot of self-reflection, which the majority of people in relationships do not actually have. No. Yeah. Most people in relationships are very selfish or self-focused. We're only asking the questions from our own perspective. We're not even asking them from God's perspective or what is love or truth. We're just asking them from our own perspective of what do I want? Basically, that's most people have in their relationship. This is why most relationships on earth are very bad. This is why most relationships on earth, you know, are never happy because we're constantly being selfish and then hoping that it works out. The only time you being selfish is going to work out is if you have somebody who's willing to accede or agree with all of your selfishness. Yes. Now, they're not going to love you if they do that because they're not loving you. You're not loving you being selfish. Yes. <laughs> so they're not loving you, assisting you to be selfish yeah. either. And if you think they are, then you're in delusion land, yeah. actually. And you're never going to have a very good relationship in the long run. And you might think the relationship has lasted 70 years. You, you might still be married 70 years later on earth even, you know, you're both 90 or something, and, and think this is a wonderful relationship, and it's not. Mm -mm. It's not a wonderful relationship. When you pass in the spirit world, po the possibility is both of you will pass into the hills. Yeah. <laughs> right? Because you both have a highly distorted viewpoint <laughs> of, what love, of what love is. And I suppose one of the most... Um, I think damaging, uh, widely held perceptions upon the earth of what love would do is, and it relates very much to the Christian viewpoint of your death, mm -hmm. is that love would sacrifice. I don't even feel it relates to the Christian viewpoint of my death. I feel this viewpoint that love is sacrifice created the Christian viewpoint of my death. Great, right, great. Right. <laughs> In other words, the Christian viewpoint of my death was a religion created around this concept that sacrifice is love. Is love. 
and, and it's it, not. it continues <laughs> to promote it and glorify it to yeah. the point that I find it quite yeah. sickening. It is. They glorify your death as, a, as proof of love yeah. and that all of us must be sacrificial mm. in our personal intimate relationships in order to prove our love or yeah. demonstrate our love. Yeah. And yet if we look at how God loves, God never sacrifices herself ever. Or truth, or truth, or love, or, at any... or principles, yes. anything ever, yeah. ever. You try and have a relationship with God and ask God to sacrifice principles, truth, love. Laws. Never going to happen. No. Never going to happen. The only person that's going to be dissatisfied in a relationship is you. Because yeah. <laughs> God will go, you, Joe, you're not, you're not requesting this of me, eh? Yeah. Like, surely you don't believe that I'm going to compromise on these issues that are universal in nature. And support the running of our entire universe. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, and yet, even whole religions have been created around the concepts of sacrifice means love. Yeah. Sacrifice doesn't mean love. It means sacrifice. Yeah. It and can, pain, usually. <laughs> yeah, it can mean love yeah. under certain circumstances, but not uh, when it's demanded or expected or any of these other places. Yes, and that's true, isn't it? That <coughs> love at times will motivate us to do something that might be viewed as a sacrifice. But we but won't we don't see it don't feel it like such. a sacrifice because we desire it. Exactly. Uh, love cause, but love causes us to want to do that thing. Yeah. Uh, and so we might, ru- in, a, in a desire to help somebody, we might rush into a situation that causes our own death. Yeah. And other people might see that as a sacrifice, but we won't actually see it as a sacrifice. We will just see it as... I had enough love for that person to not even be concerned about my own welfare. I just wanted to help that person yeah. get out. Now, of course, if I had love for my own welfare as well, I might want to have tried to have done it a different way. Yeah. <coughs> but when my love is completed, I may still do something yeah. that results yeah. in my own death for the sake of love, but it won't be because I view it as a sacrifice. Exactly. And it's, it's very similar, like, even on a micro level, like, when... When I'm when I have dinner, mm-hmm. and I can see one of them is like awesome, and the other ones, yeah, it's average. I might want like my love for you says I want to give him the awesome one. I don't feel like oh no, if I love him, I've got to sacrifice my real feelings, and because it's really about sacrificing our real desires, isn't it? Yeah. Um, that that and people see you... as a good thing. When yeah. actually, when we really love, our desire is. To, so we're not sacrificing any desire. We're living no, in our desire. Exactly. But people can view it as a sacrifice externally. Yeah. And when you ask me what meal do I want, my, my most common answer is, darling, what do you want to make? Because <laughs> yeah. I view everything you do as a gift. Yes. <laughs> you know, and if you're the one making the meal tonight, I view what you're making as a gift. So you choose what you desire to make. Yeah, yeah. Um, to me, you know, that, that is something that I will enjoy, you know, because yes. it would be terrible for me to go, oh, well, I would like that, but it's going to require three hours of effort of your time <laughs> that I can feel you don't want to engage. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So, again, yeah, I, was... I would be sensitive Certainly. To the feelings of the other person as to how much they are sacrificing themselves. Yeah. Remember, every time we betray ourselves, we're not loving anymore. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and that's different. So betrayal and sacrifice, I believe, are different things in some ways. Like, I sort of see this concept of sacrifice is more a concept of expecting betrayal. They're, yes. They're expecting a person to betray their own desires in other words, not honour or fulfil their own desires in doing something for them. And they view that as love. Mm-hmm. I don't see that as love at all. Now, if I am willing to sacrifice my own desires for a higher desire that I have, which results in something for you, then I see that as love. And that's so, not a painful choice. Not a painful choice at all. No. no. If it is a painful choice, then there's an error within me that needs healing and I'd be betraying myself by... Exactly. If it is a painful choice, then already it's out of harmony with yeah, love. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No matter whether it's in harmony with God or not, I'm yeah. out of harmony with the love of myself. Yeah. So uh, um, I need to learn to, if I'm going to make choices that are out of harmony with God's love, then I need to look at that. But if I'm going to make choices that are out of harmony with how I feel, I need to look at that. Yeah. When the two of those agree, now I know my love is the same as God's. Yeah. When the two of those disagree, I know that I need to correct something that's unloving within myself. 
But either way, I need to see, because if I can't see what I'm doing, I will never change what I'm doing if I need to change it. Yeah. Yeah. And I suppose that's what you were saying earlier, that a lot of us are in relationships where it's just one big roller coaster and feeling relieved and then feeling upset and then wanting and then controlling and then giving up and then starting again and like, oh, and all of these six questions that we've basically asked in the last two sessions. So the first two primary questions. Yes. What would love do? Yeah. And do I want to love? Yes. And then these four supplementary questions that we've just discussed in this session. Yep. They really give people sort of a roadmap to begin, don't yeah, they? they do. To, to actually begin self-reflection, emotional healing. Uh, and and be given, begin a truly loving relationship yeah. with their partner. Yeah. 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 Now, there's questions we haven't answered that we were intending to answer in this session, mm -hmm. which we'll put on to the next session. And there are questions about when would a relationship break up, you know, what about soulmate issues? What about the fact that each party in the relationship is imperfect and how do you make allowances for imperfection? And all of these kind of questions we also need to address, which we'll address in our next session. Great. Yeah, so thanks for your time, baby, Thank today. You, and thanks for Lena and Igor who are filming for us today as mm -hmm. well. Thanks, guys. <laughs>